Hi everybody, Brendan from c21teaching.com.au here. In today's Flip to Teacher professional learning video, I'm going to show you how to set up your Google form so that it will automatically send the data from the form to you in an email. Now to do that, I'm going to be using an add-on called Email Notifications for Forms. You can find that simply by Googling Google Form Email and it will bring you to this one here. It is a free add-on, uh, although there is a premium component to it if you want to go that road. Now to demonstrate how this will work, I'll be using my parent teacher meeting request Google form that I showed you in a previous video. Now obviously you can see here I've got four classes listed so I want to be able to know who I send the parent meeting request to. So what I can do is once I've added that add-on to my Google forms is I click on the jigsaw puzzle piece and I select email notifications for forms that will bring up a configuration option and I've got a number of uh, options there uh, I want to create email notification I click on that it's processing it and you can see down here in the bottom right hand corner that I've got a number of options senders full name this is the person it will be coming from in this is what will show up as far as the in the email address of the person who sent it I'm going to put my name senders email address if you're using a well you will be using a Google account to create this Google form so that will pop in there by default if you have multiple Google accounts you can select you know one of your other Google account options there email addresses to notify now this is where things get interesting you can nominate who you want the emails to go to it can be one person or there can be multiple. If I want to add in a second email address for this, the response for this form to go to, all I do is put in a comma, a space, and then type in the person's email address. So peter at example.com, comma, space, I can put another one. You can have as many as you want there, but be aware that each of those people will receive a copy of the data from this Google form. So you might need to think carefully about how many email addresses and who the email addresses are that are going to. Reply to address, this will be for the people receiving the email to respond to and notify the form submitter. So this is the person who's actually submitted the data. It will also send them a copy of the of their responses. This could be useful if you're using this in a, a testing or an exam type situation, but I'll leave that blank for now. Simply click continue. And here we go. We've got the details for, to configure the actual email itself. The first one is obviously the email subject. Now, there are a number of different ways of doing this. You can use some generic things or you can actually pull data from the form to give the, uh, the people receiving the email an idea about which form it is that you're looking at. This could be particularly useful if you've got multiple forms in use. So what we're going to put here is your name. So that's that will input the response from the your name field has responded to the form name. So what that will do if John fills in this, this form, the subject line of the email will be John has responded to parent teacher meeting request. It will pull that data in. In the body of the email, there's some default text there. Your form has a new entry. Here are the results. And then you can see the little code there. That will mean that everything from this form will drop in. Now you can change how that operates. You might want to have in response date, you might want to have only specific fields. It's up to you how you configure that, but have a think carefully about what it is that you're trying to not, uh, notify the person getting the email of. Uh, you can attach a PDF copy as well if you want to. I'm going to leave that one blank for the moment. And then you go create rule. It saves that configuration, it processes it, and we see the rule has now been created. It gives you some information about upgrading to the premium option. Alrighty, now to show you what this is going to look like, I'm going to do a dummy form, a demonstration form. So your name, parent's name is Bob, the child's name is Jane, child is in 1B, and I would prefer to be contacted by email. Click next. It will now take me to the email address form. And notice as I'm typing here that until I actually have a valid email address on the screen, it says it must be a valid email address. I then submit because I set up my branching, it tells me to simply submit. Now, if I go to my email address, straight away you can see I've got an email there that has all the details. So here are the results. Bob has responded to parent teacher meeting request. So remember we had person's name and then the form name and then there's all the information there. That's all we have time for in this video. I hope you found that useful. For more helpful videos like this, please head to c21teaching.com.au. Thanks very much.